What's up guys, it's Dan. And I am making a Gundam leg. Well, I already made it, actually. <laughs> Sorry. Things happened and I aim to get it done in time for a con, so... But, I will be, because I owe it to you guys, I really, really wanted to make a build series of this whole thing. <clears throat> I will explain to you how I went about making this, which might be a bit more boring, but at least you'll know <laughs> how all this was made. And also, um, I did live stream some of this build, uh, especially the lower leg, the knee guard, um, I think I already had made, but yeah, so if you want to check out my build and chat series, uh, live streams, you can, if you want to muddle through those, <laughs> I know they're hours long. I enjoy the live streaming, by the way, but I want to try to get back into doing more videos. By the way, don't forget, I am doing a giveaway of a uh, ARC-78-2 Gundam Beam Saber. So be sure to check out that video called Special Announcement and leave one comment that is your drawing into possibly winning it, which I will announce at the end of the month, uh, March 31st, 2023. So good luck to you. Anyway, this is the Death Sight leg one death sight leg <laughs> that I made and it wasn't too bad to be honest um it took me about a year and a half to figure out what the hell to do to get to this <laughs> I might have just overthought it that's usually what happens but I will explain to you what I did so let me start off with the thigh. As you can see, it's just a box or a square tube, actually, that I modeled directly after the Gundam Universe Death Sight figure. The whole suit is based off that figure. And I just took my thigh measurements. Um, see, it's not square because it's thighs aren't perfect circles they're more like ovals so I took this measurement and this measurement of my thigh about five and a half this way at least seven the long way and I decided to snug up on me you can see the cutaways there you have to eyeball <laughs> the cutaway and I think I did at least three tries with it, you know, fitted it on me, um, guessed where to cut it, and made the cuts, and you know, you just gotta figure that out on your own. Um, I'm using HD foam on the thigh, I'm using 10 millimeter for the front, outside, and back. The inside here is 6 millimeter foam, because I want the inside to be thinner so the legs are like they're further apart and also the six mil is more uh, flexible as this snugs up on me now these cones here these are actually off velcro these are the, actually the first things I made <laughs> I just guessed the size I needed for the leg um, I used a truncated cone pattern, which you can um, generate on the website, link up here, if I remember to put it there, <laughs> it'll generate a cone, and I just followed the detail that was on the figure, and it looks like that, it's got a recessed detail in there, looks like a dog dish. <laughs> So, and these dog dishes, Velcro to here. Now I have these on Velcro because the hardware for the knee joint is right here. 
I'm using a nylon lock nut with some washers. And I'm using a um, combination of ABS plastic and foam PVC. Try to show you. The ABS is on the thigh right here, mounted on the thigh. And then this is a disc of foam PVC that's mounted to the leg. And it's just one knee joint. This is as far as it bends. It's not a lot. Wish it was more, but this is just fine with me. I have no problems with that. Let me stick this back on. Now you may notice on the thigh here, I've got a buckle right here. This clips onto the posture harness that I put on first. So that way it holds the leg up onto me as opposed to it falling down on the foot, which will limit my ankle movement. So yeah, that's the, the thigh and the knee joint detail. And next, what confused me for whatever reason, again, probably from overthinking it, the lower leg. This, for some reason, confused me. And it took me a long time to figure out finally what to do and how to put it together. The first parts I made were the calf pieces. I patterned them off of a 14 inch balloon because that was the closest thing that I could find for the shape. Now when you pattern off a balloon, cover it with a layer of duct tape first, then layer foil over it because you can't possibly pop the balloon with the foil. So, happened to me. So, you want a protective layer of duct tape on it first, then put your foil, and then duct tape again over the foil. Now I did oversize the pattern so that way I can cut away what I didn't need. And then that's where I stopped. <laughs> I wasn't sure how to figure out the rest of the leg here. But what I ended up doing was making the square tube, just like the thigh. So I made... Jesus, sorry, it's really... My shed light is really just washing it out. It's just white. Sorry. I made the lower leg as a square tube at first. So the foam that you see here, it's all HD foam by the way. The foam that you see here continues all the way up inside. All the way up to here. So I made the lower leg minus the calf. So that way I'll, I would have a base to put the calf on, the calf pieces on. And that was so damn easy. <laughs> I felt oh, it was a year and a half or so for me to figure this shit out. <laughs> and you know, when I, when finally that revelation came to me, I'm like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Come on, Dan. I don't know, introduce round parts like this on a, a boxy mech and I get confused. <laughs> Unless it's the head, the head is easy. I mean, not easy, but understandable. So yeah, this is how I ended up making the lower leg, which again, you can see me make the lower legs in my live stream videos, my build and chat series. I forget which part, but you can see how I made these there. I think when I was watching one of Odin's live streams, I was patterning the knee guard. <laughs> this wasn't too hard to do. It's made out of floor mat foam, so it's lightweight and some craft foam up here. And it has to glue it into place. I have a piece of kneeling pad foam right here that it's glued onto. Then I also glued it on to the sides here so that it just stays. But yeah, and then I added some, I added a kneecap, which 
just looks sick. Covers my knee nicely. It goes into there nicely. Cover my knee. And for the back leg detail, I decided to try this out and it actually worked well. It's just, this is just a strip of foam, a strip of 5mm crown foam. And it just bends with the leg when it bends. Yeah, that's how I made the leg. Now there is some wood <laughs> in here and it actually serves two purposes. When I had the foot, which I'll bring in later, um, this part was getting caught up on the ankle guard, like overlapping it because it was, I designed it to be flared out, you know, because I really wanted to replicate how the figure looked like. And I was causing problems, so I said, screw it, I'll just use some quarter inch plywood and make it rigid. I don't know if you can see the wood in here, but that's wood. So that keeps it nice and solid. It doesn't get caught up on the ankle bars. And it allows me to stand the leg up <laughs> on its own, which is helpful when I'm putting the suit on. So yeah, I'm really, really, really happy with how it turned out. It looks sick, it fits well, it's not ridiculously heavy, you know, it's all made of foam, it's all hollow in there as you can see. Now you see that big bit of foam inside there, right here. I did put out a video of me test walking with the legs and feet, and I didn't really like what I saw. The leg was too far back on the foot. So to fix that, I put uh, some foam in here to help push the leg forward on me when I wore it. So my leg is in the back of the leg here. And that helped. It looks a lot better. Let me put this down. So that's pretty much the leg. Now the feet. I actually made these first. These were not filmed at all. Again, I apologize for that. I finally decided to live stream after these were built and I did some on the leg. But the feet, they were not too bad to make. Nice look there. They look really sick. <laughs> and you can see how the lower leg was getting caught on these. Um, I believe it was these. Yeah. Let me see if I can position this on here. It's roughly like that. <laughs> Peek around. Now, as I mentioned in the video, in the video where I'm doing my test walks, what I meant was the leg was too far back on the foot. And it didn't look right to me. You know, it made me go, Ugh, I gotta do something. So with the foam in there to space the leg forward, so it's like that, it looks a lot better. Now just like Odin's Gundam feet, I made these out of this. This is kneeling that foam from Harbor Freight, about an inch and a quarter thick. It's solid foam, which is Freaking awesome. It's lightweight as well. Yeah, the majority of the toe and the heel and the center block here are kneeling pad foam. Now, unlike Odin, I had to stack my pieces up to what I thought I needed them to be. Then I cut the foot to shape. He was able to generate templates for each layer of kneeling pad foam. <laughs> which was a much better method <laughs> but I managed to pull it off um, as you can see the the Death Scythe along with all the other um, Gundams and Gu the Gundam Wing series they have a heel a distinctive heel and toe just like this and then they have the center block here my center block goes all the way to the ground as you can see one plane. 
because I don't want any problems. If I made this loading, there's a chance the toe or heel can snag and separate. So at least all the material for the foot is making contact with the ground. And that's just for peace of mind. <laughs> but yeah, what I did with the black part of the foot, which is the kneeling pad foam, I glued the pieces to what I needed them to be. I used this. <laughs> this is a Japanese ryoba um, wood cutting pool saw. These are awesome, by the way. But these were excellent to cut the foam with and cut them rather precisely. You shape them to what I needed them to be. And then I did sand the kneeling pad foam. Now, you're wondering why it looks so nice. Like, what kind of finishing or filling did I do with the foam? Well, nothing really. I skinned it with some 2mm foam. <laughs> Just to make things easier for me. I knew I wanted to do that, so that's what I ended up doing. It turned out great. It was a great idea. Good move on my part. And, yeah. Here's the back of the foot. Now, you may notice this piece here. This is a result of me test fitting the feet. Finding out that that heel, you see how much it slopes and how far in it is with the foot. I have tendencies of leaning back like this on it. <laughs> you can see from the design of it that that could happen. So I added this little block right here, tried to make it like it's part of the design. And that did it. That added the stability that I needed. So that completely stops me from leaning back. Because I've tried and it takes a bit. It takes a, a lot. <laughs> and then the ankle guard is made out of format foam. You can see a strut right here. That's how the ankle guard is um, mounted. It's made out of kneeling pad foam as well. Mounted to the center block and then out to the ankle guard. Just glued on. Well, they do not move, but it's format foam. It has a lot of flex, which is nice. And then the shoe. <laughs> this is a Velcro shoe. Make it easy to get in and out of. And it is actually bolted to the foot. I have a piece of quarter inch uh, marine board on top of the, the foam, the ankle block. The ankle block goes all the way up here, all the way up. There, you can kind of see. This is the ankle block down here. This is the marine board. And then I got the chute, which is bolted using six inch carriage bolts. <laughs> That's why there's deep ass holes right there. I had to use a Forstner bit all the way to its limit to bore out these holes so that I can bolt it down because <laughs> there's a lot of material here. Since I'm down here, here's the underfoot detail. Exactly modeled to the figure as well. This is um, a textured rubber material, which is actually used to repair shoes. So I thought that was a great thing to use for the grip of a shoe. <laughs> but yeah. So this is the foot, and because it's made out of foam um, entirely, for the most part, this weighs it's 4 pounds, that's it, for something this big. This is almost 2 feet long, but yeah, 4 pounds, that's it. If I was using wood, probably 10 or more, <laughs> just to create the lift. I had to make the foot first, actually, to determine the lower leg. Yeah, having the foot first um, help determine how to size this guy. Because this is obviously um, not any fixed scale because it had to fit me. Um, same thing with the arms. They're not really to any scale. It's just to look right 
and to look right with the suit, which it does. This is one of my favorite pictures, by the way. <laughs> I am in the suit, in this picture, and I love the lighting in it too, but it looks so good. They're standing so proud. <laughs> to give me more height, I didn't mention this before, but I have a lifted insole in here that's about another inch or so. I have around a 10 inch lift total with these feet. And also with the leg, um, I made it so that when I'm standing in it, it's just like this. Um, my foot is on the ground. <laughs> when you're making a cosplay suit like this, you really have to think about how you're going to put it together and the steps that you're going to put it together in. Um, you can watch my, uh, my SAC anime video where I debut the death site. And in the beginning, I'm putting it on, and that's the exact order that I have to put it on. Posture harness, legs, then feet, then skirt armor, lower body, arms, the entire upper body, which includes the shoulders and the backpack, and then the head. Yeah, that was it for the legs and feet. That's gonna be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed my explanation of how I made the legs and feet. Again, if you want to see some of the leg build, um, you can check out my build and chat live stream. Um, the dead side ones, there's others that I did. <laughs> but yeah, that's going to be it for this one. And I'll see you guys in the next video.